about I want to talk about a, web, about a website called AAAMath.com. Can you take one and just pass them along? There might be one left over for me at the end. We'll see. I'll need everybody's attention for this. I'm going to go to the internet. And how about I go to Google? We'll make it a little more official. Okay. Sure, why not? So I'm here at Google, and one of the things that I think makes math get better is just more and more and more and more practice. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit flex flexible on how much you practice, but I will say when you're in class, if you finish something, if you finish something before the end of class, I do want you to then do something else productive. That doesn't mean it's Facebook time. It means it's time for something else. Uh, and, and one of the things that we have, one of the tools in our toolkit is this AAAMath.com. I can go to Google and type AAAMath, and it's right here, the first link. It's the first link that came up. I can give that one click. And it takes me to math.com. This is a free website. If too many people try to use it at once, it'll eventually tell you that they want us to buy something. So I guess we'll find out what happens if all of you try to use it at once. But for now, it's just me demonstrating. Uh, I want to draw your attention when you come to AAA Math. I want to draw your attention to this left column. Okay. I'm not looking at sorted by grade level. I want to look at the left column. If I zoom in, is that bigger? Did that just get bigger for everybody? Okay. On the left side of the page, it's sorted by subject. Alphabetically, there's addition, algebra, comparing, counting, decimals, division, equations, and more. Let's come down for a little bit. Now, what do I see here? Hey, here's percent. That's something we talked about, right? Up here is fractions. We talked about that. There's decimals. So some things that we've already talked about are on there. Later on, we'll get to uh, averages, which they, we actually find in the statistics section. But just as an example, let me click on percent. Okay. We need to ignore the ads. That's important. Um, unless you really want to click on ads, take up all your time looking at who knows what, uh, we want to ignore them and focus on percentage topics. Now these, these links that are here will actually just jump you farther down on the same page. If I click calculating percents, it just bounced me down the page to the calculating percents section. We come back up. Here's the top. We can also scroll through the page and look at everything that they have. We have calculating percents, relationships of percents, uses of percents. Let's start with something simple. Percent of a number. Now this is something we did last time, right? In our last one, we, let me bring up Word for a second. In our last class, we said, if you want to find a percent of a number, what do they have? Um, okay, we want to find 87% of 68. And the patented Chris Heisen method for doing that was to say, well, 87, that's, that's a fraction of 100, right? And another way of writing that would be 87 divided by 100, okay? What does of mean? Times. Times, multiply. So... To come up with our final answer, we can say 87 divided by 100 
times 68. And if we multiply all that out, we'll get about 59. So this is Chris's way of doing it. Back to the website. They give instructions also. Their instructions are different than mine, but just as valid. They give you instructions that say, multiply the number by the percent. So they say, 87% of 68, multiply 87 times 68, and get 5,916. And then, divide the answer by 100. They also mention that move a decimal point thing. I'm happy they put it in parentheses, though, because I don't want that to be our, our first move. And then they add at the end to round it off. I round it off to a whole number, to 59. Uh, but there's no reason in day-to-day -day use that you would always have to do that. Uh, so they give us instructions, right? Up at the top of this page, when we actually have the lesson and actually have the information, at the top, we have learn, practice, play, explore, and some more stuff. Let me click on practice. That jumped me down the page. I'm still on the same page, by the way. If I come back up to the top, there's that lesson we just looked at. There's the top. Jumping down to the practice section, it's a, a very simple little interface they have here. You click Start, and they ask you a question. 64% of 19. And you can use a calculator. Let me bring up mine. The Chris Heisen way would be to say 64 divided by 100 times 19 and get 12.16. Their instructions over here say, determine the answer to the nearest whole number. So 12.16, I'll actually just type in 12. Then I click check to see if I'm right, and look what it says. Correct. 66% of 99, let's come back to that calculator. 66 divided by 100 times 99. 65.34, if we round that off, that's 65. I'll check it, and I'm correct. We even get a little tally down at the bottom here. You have two correct and zero incorrect. This is 100% correct. I have two out of two. If I do another one, let's say I get this one wrong. Let's say I uh, type in 15 here and click check. Uh-oh, I get a little pop-up that tells me, no, it's 22. And they put the real answer in there as well. Let me get this one partially right. Let's see. This website is not very forgiving. 36% of 18, 36, divided by 100. That's our percentage, right? Of means times, 18. 6.48. This website is very picky. If I type in 6.48, even though that is exactly correct, it says, nope, you got it wrong. It should be 6. It should be rounded off because their directions said rounded off to the nearest whole number. So this, this is a good website for practicing, but you have to hold your frustration in check because Sometimes, especially when you first start using it, people aren't used to that level of insistence in the directions to say, no, you have to follow the directions. Uh, let me come back to the left side here. So we have a lot of different subjects. Let's click on decimals for another example. And then there's a lot of topics underneath that subject. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, place values, comparing decimals, finding percents, converting. How about converting? Oh, converting decimals to fractions, fractions to decimals, percents to fractions, des decimals. To, hey, decimals to percents. We did that one. And they say what to do. Multiply a decimal by 100. I remember doing that in class. And you can practice that, too. If I click practice... 0.74 is equal to how many percent? 74, yeah. If we multiply it by 100, and there's no harm in using the calculator to be sure, 
0.74 times 174. No harm in using the calculator. They say determine the answer to the nearest whole number. I'll put 74 and click check. Hey, I'm right. Surprise, surprise. And if I get it wrong, the little pop-up tells me what the right answer was. Uh, back up to the side. The steps for you. And I'm going to look over your shoulder and read this upside down to you. Number one, it will open up the internet when it's time to use AAA math. Number two, in Google you're going to type AAA math. It should be the first link that comes up then. Number three, uh, when you do this search, click the first thing, which should be the right one. And on the website, we're going to click this topic on the left. That's one where I think people skip that step and they just start clicking whatever. You don't want to just say that you want to practice fifth grade math. Because I don't know if you remember fifth grade, but a lot of the stuff they show you in fifth grade doesn't come up in day-to-day -day life now. They might have done that thing where they showed you little blocks and you had to make fractions out of them. That's great. That's a, I think that's a great intellectual skill to have. But it's very, very rare that Janet comes to me, Janet Ewart comes to me, and says, Chris, I need you to make a fraction out of these blocks. No, it, that doesn't come up in real life. But it's very likely that Janet would say something like, Chris, you're getting a 4% raise. Well, maybe once a year, <laughs> if that. But, but it's much more likely that she would say something involving an actual percentage or an actual fraction. So you don't want to go by those, those grade numbers at the top. You do want to go by the topics at the left. And once you're at one of these specific topics, then you have the practice button that you can click to get some of that practice. It's a little bit of busy work, but I think it's busy work with the purpose of fine-tuning some of your uh, your skills with these things. So, questions on AAAMath.com? No? I'm not actually going to have you do it right now. I have a different, more live in your face paper exercise for you. But, when you finish that, if you finish it before the day is out, guess where I want you to go? AAAMath.com. All right. You can exit out of that window if you want. I'm going to exit out of my stuff. And I will shortly get you a, a real exercise. Let's see. Oh, mine's over here. Tomorrow's laptop looks suspiciously like mine. <laughs>